What's going on guys? Joe from Total Justice Gaming here. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. We work hard to bring you guys videos five days a week. So, today we are going to be looking at a very, very old deck. But um, there is some hype around it uh, because a new card is going to be added to it in the next set coming in October. And that is Shinsugumi. I did my Shinsugumi profile long, long time ago. It was a little cringeworthy because it was one of our earlier attempts uh, in deck profiling. Um, just, you know, I, I work with the deck every so often. Once in a blue moon, I bring it out and play. It's mostly for fun. Uh, these newer changes I made uh, will let it be a little bit better. You can still use it for fun, but I wouldn't be taking anything outside of locals. But we'll dig right into it. So right off the bat, I did change the buddy. Uh, one of the guys at the shop uh, did give me a handful of Shinsengumi stuff because he usually gets like really old sets. Um, we're not really sure how he does it, but he gets some really old sets. I... So he gave me some Shinsengumi stuff. I was really very appreciative of it. Uh, as such, we did change the buddy from Sai uh, Saito to Soshi. So we're going to hop right into the profile. As I said before, the buddy is Soshi, so we're going to be running four copies of him. Uh, his ability is Triple Thrust, which is if another Shinsengumi is on your field, I can rest Soshi and destroy a monster on the opponent's field. This is just really good control element to it. It's not once per turn, so if you have another way to stand him or you can call another Soshi, then you can just tap him and blow up whatever you need uh, killed on the board. Say for a few monsters in the current meta that just can't be touched no matter what. Regardless of that, Soshi is a great buddy because he gets to come into play, rest him, gain a life, and because of the buddy gift, and now I can just tap him to kill something on top of that. So moving right along, we are moving off to Kondo. We're going to be running four copies of Kondo. Uh, he is Pay a Gauge. Uh, then a static ability of all Shinsengumi get plus one crit. This monster also gets one crit, so Kondo becomes a 2-3-1. The thing I will say about this is you got to have a lot of heavy, uh, con some control elements to this and be able to strike back on the opponent's turn while keeping your monsters on the board. This is one of the original uh, sets that Shinsengumi came out of, and we haven't seen support for them in quite some time. So... Their attack is extremely low to what we're used to in the current meta. So, Kondo, for of, uh, make sure that we get uh, high crits. Moving on, we got our old buddy, which is Saito. We're running four of him because Saito is still a beat stick. He is uh, 5k, which is always the number we're looking for in terms of power for size ones. He is a 4-1-5-1-4, excuse me. He has no ability, but he is just a size 1 beat stick. We pair him with Kondo, he becomes a 5-2-4, which is pretty average nowadays. I'm running him out of 4 of. Also out of 4 of is Hijikata. Uh, Hijikata is a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Static of ability is when this card uh, comes into play, I may pay gauge if I do. Put a Wolf of Mibu from the drop zone back in my hand. So he lets us go and grab uh, one of the principal spells for the deck, which is a which we will look at in a little bit. But it's a plus five, plus five in counterattack, making our Shinsengumi really beefy. And he just goes and grabs it for us if we've already used one, uh, just for a simple ga uh, one gauge. So we're running him at a 4 of 2, continuously make sure the Wolf of Meepu comes back to hand. Uh, next up, we're running 4 Nakakura. Nakakura is also a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Uh, if another Shinsengumi is on your field, uh, it gets plus 2, plus 2. Meaning... Um, 
All my other Shinsengumi gets plus two, plus two. Sorry, guys. Small brain freeze. So Kondo becomes a 4-4. Four, four. So Saito becomes a 7-3. Uh, Hijikata becomes a 4-4, four, four. so uh, Nagakuro helps us get numbers, which we drastically and sorely need in this deck. Uh, he's a welcome addition. Up next, we are also going to be running two copies of Sanosuke. Sanosuke is a size 1. He is also a 4-2-4. Four, four. He has a very heavy cold cost of pay to gauge but uh, when he enters the field, uh, I can search my deck for up to one Shinsengumi monster, uh, put in my hand and show my deck. So he pretty much lets me go and gets a Soshi or a Kondo when I need them and just put it into my hand to play immediately. So he allows for a little bit of tutor, so I'm running him right now at a two of. I was running him at a four of, but it was getting too costly to bring him out over and over and over again with that call cost to pay to gauge. So I dropped him down to a two of. I still get what I need. He just adds that extra bit of consistency. Uh, next up is not a Shinsengumi, uh, but for those of you that know Japanese history, he's actually intrinsically tied to the Shinsengumi. Uh, this is Dragon Knight Ryoma. Uh, he is based off Ryuma Sakamoto, who was famously potentially assassinated by the Shinsengumi due to, uh, in the Meiji, period, Meiji Restoration. He is also considered uh, the far, uh, forefather of the Japanese naval military. But enough of the history lesson. So the reason why I'm running him. Uh, he is a 4-2-3. Uh, call cost is pay gauge. Uh, his ability one at a time. When he comes into play, uh, I may return a monster other than Dragonite Ryoma from my field to my hand. So why this is important is this lets me bounce my uh, Soshi back to my hand after I've rested to kill a monster to call it again. And as I said before, it's not once per turn. So this lets me uh, bring Soshi back into play and rest it to kill a second monster if I need to. I'm running Ryoma at a 4 of. For weapons, uh, I was running the weapon that gets double attack if I have two or more monsters on the field. Uh, board wipe is very, very uh, relevant in this meta, and so is out of combat kill conditions, so that wasn't really netting me the bonus of double attack too often. So I went back to my old weapon, Dragon Lance Strong One. Uh, it costs a gauge and a life to equip. Uh, I can only attack the center with it. Uh, if I have another Dragonite on the field, it becomes a 7-2 seven, uh, seven as, as opposed to a 4-2. But the real reason I'm running this is because it has Penetrate, and Penetrate is very, very much needed in this meta. So we're running it at a 3 of. Also new to the deck, uh, we're running two copies of the in, a new impact called Dragon uh, Calvary Art Spirit uh, Aura. Uh, let me read this because this one is a little wordy. So the cast cost is pay 3 gauge. It's really easy to get that in this deck because not a lot of our stuff costs gauge. Um, I can choose cards on my opponent's field equal to the number of Dragonites in my drop zone. Destroy the chosen cards and deal damage to your opponent equal to the number of cards destroyed. Same card cannot be chosen more than once. So uh, if I have a plethora of Dragonites sitting in my drop zone, I can use this to blow up the opponent's board and potentially deal them three damage. Uh, not much is really need to be said on this. This is my prefer one of my other kill conditions other than mass uh, high crit swarm. Uh, this lets me just ink out some good burn damage. Hopefully finish them off with that three. And that's about it for why I'm running this impact. For spells, we're going to be running, of course, three, or excuse me, four green dragon shields. This is our open center shield that gains us a life and nullifies the attack. If you're running Dragon uh, Dragon World, you run into the shield more often than not. Also, we're running two copies of Blue Dragon Shield we j in case we need that extra gauge. Uh, again, this deck is not very um, gauge heavy, so we only really needed two. 
top of that, we have a lot of other protection spells that let us strike back, so that's why I'm only running six shields. Uh, the Wolves of Mibu. This is the card that uh, either Hijikata or Nagakura allow us to go get. I apologize, let me go grab it just to make sure. It is Hijikata. And its ability is counterattack. Choose a certain Sengumi in battle, and for this turn, it gets plus five, plus five in counterattack. Uh, so it gives a ridiculously high buff for on counter speed, uh, be it uh, your turn or the opponent's turn, to let them overpower you, uh, overpower the unit. Uh, sitting of five k, five k is really, really nice. Uh, having it uh, counterattack is just, you know, the icing on the cake. Uh, we're running for this. It is searchable in the drop zone via Hijikata. Uh, we want to play this as often, uh, as, often as possible. Uh, it's just a really good way to make sure that their board is as cleared as possible, uh, even on their own turn. So next up, we're running three copies of Night Energy. They are a lesser form of Wolves of, Mi uh, Wolves of Mibu. The reason why we're running this is uh, the plus three, plus three, and counterattack. On top of that, not everything is Shinsengumi, so I can't Wolves of Mibu uh, Ryoma. So I am putting uh, Night Energy in there. And, you know, if I don't have... Uh, Wolves of, Wolf of Mibu, then I can at least get Night Energy, and plus three, plus three can still potentially help keep my units around, or get that little extra push on my turn to make sure that they get through. Next up, we're running two copies of Skies in Your Hand. I am aware that this is now routed to once per turn. Uh, the reason is this also is another bounce trick for... Uh, so she or this lets me bounce back a unit that's going to be destroyed back to the hand, thus negating the battle. So just pay gauge, bounce something back to hand, uh, tricks with Soshi, and uh, defense with any other monster. We're also running Dragonic Maneuvers. Uh, Return a Dragonite from your field to your hand. You can only pay this once per turn. It's just basically a... Um, Once per turn version of Skies in Your Hand for a free cost. Um, honestly, I could probably make Dragonic Maneuvers a four of now that uh, Skies in Your Hand is um, once per turn. But this one only looks uh, targets a single monster, while Skies in Your Hand bounces the entire field back to your hand. Uh, thus saving you from losing your monsters and just bringing them back out next turn. So we're running this only at a two of, again, tricks with Soshi or potentially negating an attack or a potential board wipe. And then the final card is Drago Bond. Um, I can only cast this if I do not have a monster in the center. Uh, choose a monster in my field. It is counter speed during this turn. The next time it be destroyed, it is not, and I gain two life. We do want to keep our Shinsengumi on the board as much as possible. Uh, we have ways to bounce them back to hand and bring them out uh, the following turn. Uh, or, and our Dragon Shields, this just also allows us to maintain field presence and pretend, uh, get any out of kill. Uh, spells out of the way, or monster effects that want to destroy when they come into play. Let's let them give it around, plus we get the added boon of plus two life. So guys, that is my Shinsengumi deck. It's been updated. It's a lot of fun. I really do look forward to that new Shinsengumi monster coming out. It's definitely going to make this uh, much more aggressive. I don't know if it's going to get any more support beyond that. I really do hope so, because I would love this to be a more competitive deck. This was my first buddy fight deck, uh, so I really do look forward to seeing the support coming out in October. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, please like, subscribe, comment. I read the chats. I enjoy talking with you guys. You guys give us great info and make it a really good community that we like being a part of. So have a great rest of the night.